Rufus, your Boxing Day subject is The Box, a container typically square or rectangular with a removable lid or cover. Off you go, Rufus. Well, actually, um, as you know, it's a Christmas special. I thought I would do something special and wrap my lecture. And with it being about boxes, I've invited a beatboxer to join me. Please can everybody welcome Grace Savage to the stage. For those just... listening at home, yes, this is really happening. <laughs> I, I, I realise at this point, trying to do hip-hop on Radio 4 is immediately alarming. Um, <laughs> if, if you're listening to this, uh, try to chill out a little bit. I went to private school and Grace lived in Guildford for a year. <laughs> Ready? OK. One, two, a two, a three, a four. Pin them back and listen up. Try not to be whack, Jack, I'm coming up With truths all about that which things come in Brown paper packages tied up with string I'm talking about boxes, conceptually tough 3D rectangles that you fill with stuff But the stuff that's in boxes will normally change Depending on context, otherwise it's strange Schrodinger, philosophic science whiz Popped a kitty in his, a pretty kitty and says If you open the box, there's electric shocks Don't touch the locks, the cat is now a paradox Both dead and alive is the feline situation But its status will be changed by the act of observation. The main thing that we learned from that, Schrodinger did not like cats. <laughs> Graham. <laughs> Can I just hear that again? Uh, I, think, I think Schrodinger didn't like cats. He hated cats. It's certainly difficult to infer yeah. that you'd be particularly pro-feline is all you did was think about them in a box all trapped and maybe dead and alive at the same time. It's very but, odd having this conversation after the rap, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> um, it's certainly not one of the truths that oh, right. uh, Rufus was sent to smuggle, but I think you can have a point for saying that I reckon Schrodinger wasn't that keen on cats. Yeah. But do write in if you know differently. So, uh, Rufus, ca- carry on with that... Uh, with carry on. Carry on. <laughs> Have you ever seen a lot of rap gigs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four. Over a century ago, if you had cornflakes, it may have been your wife who put a smile on the face of the local grocer. Why do you suppose a respectable woman would act like a hoser? Well, a promotion from Kellogg's told ladies of the day that free cornflakes would be heading their way if they winked at the bloke behind the counter. He'd know she wanted cornflakes and not try to mount her. And if she wanted free wheat a bit, she just undid her cardi and showed him his tip. <laughs> I feel sorry for you if you were Victorian and while everyone else was asleep and snoring you fancied a fiddle with your downstairs self which now we all agree is quite good for your health so men are from Mars and women are from Venus parents popped a little boxes on their Martian's penis and if any members in the night stirred an alarm went off and a buzzer was heard <laughs> um. <laughs> Lee did uh, parents used to pop boxes on their little Martians' penises? <laughs> uh, yes, they did. Yes, that is true. But, but, um, but, the, um, uh, but yes, the, the Victorians invented the self-abuse alarm. A small box wired to a buzzer was attached to a young man's penis to allow worried parents to hear a buzzer in the event of nocturnal activity. So, yeah. It was a bane of my childhood. <laughs> Jack, stop that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Rufus, do continue. Okay. With table tennis bats, the next verse starts, and if you ever wondered where they got the parts to build them, bruv... I ain't joking, it was the lids of the boxes of cigars that they were smoking. If you waited, Beth rated... Graham. I'm terribly sorry, Rufus. Um, no, I really don't apologise, Graham. This but... is a rod from my own back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, table tennis was started uh, with... They actually played with cigar boxes. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Originally, table tennis, which at the time, as we know, thanks to Boris Johnson, was called Whiff Waff, uh, <laughs> was played using cigar box lids as bats and... Uh, Champagne corks as balls and books as a net. Lovely woman, Annette. <laughs>
Jack. <laughs> if you've waited Beth Brated at the weight that I'm punching with a spare tin lunchbox that's got no lunch in, you'll get a king's ransom from Marilyn Manson. The geezer collects them, he thinks that they're handsome, which isn't a behaviour you'd expect from the brother. Goes to show you can't touch a goth by its cover. Oh. But now we're easing people pleasingly through seasonal business, like Slade told you. It's Christmas! Eat, drink, be merry, just love, no scorning, enjoy your prezzies, but hear my warning. Every year, accidents accrue, 10,500 in 2002, from cardboard boxes. <laughs> Lee, I think uh, 10,500 accidents did ensue in 2002, if that indeed was what he said that was true. See, it's addictive, isn't it? <laughs> It's much easier than I make it look, isn't it? (laughs) Yes, you're absolutely right. He was, yeah. Um, He was, he was saying ten and a half thousand acts in 2002 with cardboard boxes. Okay. Cardboard boxes, these accidents were the instigation, so spread the message across the nation. On Christmas, tidy all your boxes away and keep yourself nice till. Boxing Day. (laughs) 